integration. I want to talk a little bit about uh, a very, very important uh, insight I got after I practiced for years. I've practiced, you know, sequences and techniques and licks and scales and all kinds of stuff, but I couldn't really combine it in any meaningful way. So all I had were, were little gimmicks, like uh, like the ability to juggle seven bottles in the air, right? Give me a second, I'm going to play an impressive alternate picking sequence for you. But I couldn't use that in a musical context. And the reason uh, was that, you know, combining two things uh, requires you to, to move your fingers in a, in a different way. So you're actually not done when you've learned the sequence because you always have to learn to go from that sequence into another thing. And that, that goes for the right hand and the left hand. So what I recommend that you do is to use as many techniques as you can and try to blend them so they, they become they're, they're seamlessly combined. So if you have a six note um, lick, or sequence your six notes up, you might uh, practice that with alternate picking. That might be a really a thing of yours that you've been working on for a long time. Uh, but then try to play it with another technique. Let's try to play it with hammer-ons and only pick the first note on each string. So I go... And I might play two sixes with hammer-ons and then two sixes with alternate picking. Right? Or slower. And if you want to play along, I can tell you that I'm on the B and E string and I'm in the 8th, the 10th and the 12th fret on both strings. Um, so if I practice that enough, I can, I can uh, instead of having the alternate picking sequence be something I have to start in the same way and end in the same way each time, I can now... I can go in and out of the two techniques uh, while I'm playing, which is amazing because... Uh, it just gives you an, an enormous amount of freedom. And once you start doing that with everything, um, then suddenly you begin to sense what it's like to have that freedom that uh, you see other people have, you know, the pros out there. Uh, let's just a little sh shortly an another example. Let's say you have uh, an A minor sweet picking arpeggio where you have two notes on the first string, two notes on the last, and then just one note on each string in between. If I, if I, you know, I can practice that. But once I'm done practicing that, that's all I know. I can't use it anywhere. So what I have to do is I have to, I have to make sure that I can do, that I can do something up here or I can go into some legato, right? That, that I can shift to another thing right there or to alternate picking, right? So, and, and the, re, the, the, the way I do that is I just sit down and comfortably, and then I just play stuff, right? Let's just uh, have this uh, A minor arpeggio be my focal point. And then I just, I could spend a couple of minutes just going up that arpeggio, and then ending it in, in different ways. And this looks a little easy right now because I've been doing this a lot. But in the beginning, you're simply... Uh, what? Right? And then you come up with something. You come, okay, what if I did... Did that or... That sounds pretty good. Right? And then you play it slowly. You get up to speed. Um... And it, it, of course, you're not practicing something very, something new here. You're, you're just using stuff you know already. But you're combining it in new ways. And once it's comfortable, once you have... Once it's comfortable and feels easy, then you can move on to combining uh, or ending it in a different way. And, and each time you do it, you tend to come up with stuff that you really can't play. And that's the whole point, right? You have to, you have to practice going from one to the other. So you just, this is really like improvising very slowly. And 
it's not going to sound like this if you've never done this before. It's not going to sound like that. You have to, you know, get it up to speed. So you might come up with a little idea, then you spend two minutes just getting it up to speed. And you can't play it after two minutes. It's probably because you're practicing something you haven't played before. And that's not the point of integration. The point of integration is just play what you know already, but combining it. Um, the same thing goes for any other thing that we, we want to learn. Now, we've been talking a little bit about um, the techniques and trying to play uh, with different techniques. The same thing with different techniques. But as I just did here, you can also play, go from sweep picking to legato, from sweep picking to, um, to alternate picking, right? Like I did here. But at the same time, you can practice beginning and ending your sequences or beginning and ending your licks. Um, so, for instance, if I, again, if I have this simple six note lick, six notes up, how am I going to use that in a, an actual playing situation? Well, um, so in that you have to practice that. You have to go, you have to actually practice. The, and each time you get a new idea, just, just, you know, just playing six notes up and then using your middle finger to play a middle note is a little challenge if you haven't done it before. Or you might want to slide up for a cool ending there, so you go... For instance, right? And, and that requires you to play your six note sequence, then pick the middle note in the 10th fret and then slide it up to the 15th fret. And th this is a little thing that you have to practice. So, because when you've been practicing a six note lick over and over and over and over again, in your brain you have a pattern that says, once I'm finished with those six notes, I have to go back to the first one again. And you've been trained like a dog to do that thousands and millions of times, right? If you've been just practicing and practicing and practicing. So the only thing you can do now is, and you have to break that pattern. So you go, oh, a new thing there. Oh. Right? And you have to practice that. And as I said, it doesn't sound like this if you've never done it before. It sounds more like this. Ah, because you have to break the pattern in your in your mind. And you right? And then you play that a couple of times. Once it's easy, right? Then you just move on. And that's it. And then in the end, what that becomes is this. It's, it looks like magic. Oh, you could, uh, do, then he does this, then he does that. And it's not magic. It's what you're listening or seeing here is just a, a, a faster version of what I've been talking about. Just combining stuff, you know. Um, last example. Let's say I've been practicing a very classical sequence like four notes down and then, and then back to the, you know, uh, previous note. In order to use, in order to, or the other way, in order to use the, all the work I've done to learn that sequence and play it through scale shapes, in order to use that work, I have to go combine it with uh, a sequence I learned just previously, perhaps. Let's say I, le I learned this sequence. And now I want to combine it with... Ah, that's a nice little exercise there, so I can... That, that's in time. Right? <laughs> right? And then I have these two together, so now I can go... Or of course, I have to practice combining them in more than one way. I could also go up... And so on. 
And so what that now becomes, when you've been doing that over and over again, you just come up with a new little challenge for yourself um, when you're done with the first one, when you're bored with the first one, and then suddenly you can go... Right? And that's what comes out of that. That, and, and, you know, it's not a, it's not a practice session where you, you're all focused on what am I doing here and I have to have a system for this and I have to, you know, go step by step. No, you just come up with stuff because that's really uh, what it's about, right? Uh, soloing and improvising if that's what you're doing. And then um, that gradually becomes that fluent playing style. And this process here is what you spend... Um, and you can talk to people while you do it even, uh, once you get into the habit of doing it. But this is the first step to putting on a jam track and then taking that new fluency there that you have in your hands and, you know, turning this... Turning that into something that has rhythm, that has timing to it. And that's the next challenge for you, really. So, uh, but, but until you have the fluency, the timing is going to be a little bit um, tough because what are you going to play, right? So, but once you can play, then suddenly, one, two, three. Bit jazzy there. But then um, you suddenly uh, have the, 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 the foundation or the basis for developing fluency as the music plays, which is a, which is a slightly different discipline. So th those are the words on integration. I hope you'll, you'll, you'll really try to do this, and it, it might be a little bit hard in the beginning, but just don't give up. Once you, once you uh, discover how powerful this is and what a huge difference it, it uh, means to your playing, if you do it every day, um, then you'll, you'll get hooked.